Come on, let's do it together. You, you put your leg. Okay, no. Go ahead. <laughs> let's all stand. We're going to begin our service. <laughs> Sorry to lead you in a tune. And uh, let's pray, guys. Amen. <laughs> And we're going to let Christina stand the rest of the service. <laughs> Father, we just lift you up in this place. Thank you so much, God, for your goodness. And <clears throat> Lord, the way you take care of us. I'm always get up every day thankful. How about you, church? I'm just so thankful for your faithfulness, God, to me. And, um, you know, and, and to the body here. Thank you so much for how good you are. Pour yourself into this place, God. May your word bring life into us and speak life into us tonight in Jesus' name. And if you agree, would you say amen? Amen. You can be seated, and um, we welcome our Facebook church. And go ahead and take up the offering, dude. What you waiting on? Come on, man. You get it rolling. Get it rolling. Get it rolling. He's going to take up the offering. If um, check it, you know, wave it at him or something like that, and he'll he'll pick it up. And guys, let me do this. You know, as we're we're getting ready for the word tonight, I'm sure some of you you probably are aware of everything going on right now. You know, with what's going on in D.C. And everything, and um, you know, I just, I just really feel like I need to speak peace into you as, as a church. Don't you dare! Are you ready for this? Don't you dare give in to a spirit of hopelessness. All right, you cannot give in to a spirit of hopelessness, and you know, and I've, I've had to tell people today, just turn the TV off. You focus your heart and your mind on God, okay, and the goodness of God, and move that direction. Flow with all the goodness of God. And then let God be the one who instructs you on how you're supposed to go forward. How many of you know God will never lead you wrong? He'll always lead you right. And Sunday I'm going to be preaching, uh, you know, I'm going to interrupt, uh, you know, my, my beginning of the year stuff because of what's going on right now. And um, I'm very careful how I speak into things and, and um, you know, and, and what was that? Okay. And what I say, <laughs> I didn't know what it was. And, uh, you know, and some of the things that I say, you know, I, I, I feel like, you know, I, I want to be led by the Spirit of God, but I am going to change, um, you know, the sermon a little bit on Sunday and, um, and kind of show you where you should be in all this stuff, okay? I think it's important. But tonight, let's get into the Word. Go with me, if you will, to 2 Timothy chapter 2. We're going to start off in verse 22. This is in the message paraphrase. Um, to tonight's title is Hitting Life Head On. Everybody say it with me. Hitting life head on. How many of you know, um, you ever had anybody just, what is it? Yeah, I will. You want me to do it now? Yeah? Okay. Jackie, um, mom passed away last night. And I was going to pray for it in the end of the service. So why don't you stretch your hand toward her and David right now? They'll be leaving probably Friday, Saturday, Sunday, sometime to go to Pennsylvania, so we just release peace into you. I know you have it, okay? And, Father, that you'll provide everything necessary, and you'll give them safety, and you'll make them be a light shining in their family. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So let's, let's um, you know, I, I want to read this out of the message paraphrase. Um, you ever had, you ever had, you just run into somebody, guys, you know, I love to pick at Pam, and sometimes I'll hide around the corner. And when she comes out of the bathroom or comes out of the, the laundry room or comes out of the bedroom or something or comes in the front door, I'm standing there just looking at her, you know, just, just like right in her face. And I mean, if you know, it doesn't matter how many times I do it, she always gets surprised. Now, you would think, she would think at some point in time, Rick's going to be around that corner. But she never thinks about Rick being around that corner. And I get a kick out of it all the time. And, uh, you know, because it's just fun to do. I'm sorry, it just really is. And so, you know, we run into life, guys, and, and life can hit us head on sometimes. And we got to learn how to handle life. You know, I, I preach about this a lot, and I was really, um, you know, wavering on how I was supposed to, to teach on Wednesday nights right here after the first of the year. Uh, finally just sat down today. I mean, you know, this morning I had zero direction. How many of you know that's dangerous for a preacher because that gives me legal right? to go anywhere I want to go, and I started, <laughs> I started getting a little bit of definition on this, so just bear with me as I, as I gain some bearings and, and we start teaching this. And, um, and listen to this verse of Scripture. It says in, in 2 Timothy 2, starting in verse 22, we're going to read through 26. It says, <clears throat> Run away from infantile indulgence. Run after mature righteousness. Everybody say that with me. 
Run after mature righteousness. Can we do it again? Run after mature righteousness. And listen, that's faith, love, peace, joining those who are in honest and serious prayer before God. If ever there was a time where we need to be chasing after righteousness is now. We should be doing it all the time. Do you understand me? But right now, guys, you, if you want to know something that will settle your faith, find out what God's saying about what the situation is right now, and then pursue peace. Come on, y'all. You pursue peace. And, and it says this, peace, joining those who are in honest and serious prayer before God, refuse to get involved in, and I think I say this right, in, in inane discussions, and uh, I think one definition of that, and people don't like it when I use this sometimes, but stupid, discussions, okay, that's what that word means, they always end up in fights. You ever been there? Okay, they always end up in fights. Listen to this. God's servant must not be argumentative, but a gentle listener and a teacher who keeps cool, working firmly but patiently with those who refuse to obey. You never know how or when. This is where I wanted to get to. How many of you are with me right now? You never know how or when God might sober them up with a change of heart and a turning to the truth, enabling them, and this is, this is where we're going to talk a little bit on, enabling them to escape the devil's trap where they are caught and held captive, forced to run his errands. Now, many of you know, that is a powerful verse of Scripture. Come on, guys. Has anybody else ever read that verse? Can, can, can you just be honest? Has anybody ever read that verse of Scripture before or that portion of Scripture? Maybe not in the, not in the, the message paraphrase. Maybe, have you ever read that? And it, Doesn't that bring a settling into your life? You know, I, I struggle sometimes, guys, with, um, you know, and I told you this before, but, uh, you know, one time I got so frustrated as a pastor because I went to a past, my pastor and I started complaining about pastoring. Now, how many of you know if, you wanna, if, you wanna, if you're a pastor and you want to complain about pastoring, find a pastor because he understands what pastoring is all about. And so I started complaining to him. Finally, he looked at me. He said, well, Rick, he said, are you, tired of, are you tired of preaching? He said, are you tired of pastoring? I said, oh, no, I'm not tired of pastoring. I said, I'm just sick of people. How many of you know, guys, if we get our hearts wrong, and we start looking at just the surface of everything going on in our lives, it's very easy for us to get discouraged. It's very easy. But we have to remember something. And I, and I, and I got to say this right here. You have to remember something. Just because you see something happening in the natural does not mean that God's not working behind the scenes. And you got to allow God the opportunity to work behind the scenes. Because here's the thing, you know, the Word of God tells us very clear here, you never know how. Come on, y'all, say that with me. You never know how. <laughs> well, what does that mean? Come on, you never know. Does that mean that God can do anything? <clears throat> that God can accomplish anything? You know, and, and I, I'm a firm believer of this. You know, um, I've seen times where you just talk to somebody and talk to somebody and talk to somebody until you run out of breath. And they'll look at you and say, I don't want to hear another thing you have to say. Anybody ever heard that one before? And then they'll go out and they'll run into the same thing somebody else telling them and they'll accept it. It always amazes me as a pastor. I can be preaching a sermon series and we can have a guest speaker in and he'll preach the same thing that I preached. And everybody will come up to him and tell him how wonderful the sermon was. That they never heard anything like that before. And I just spent six weeks preaching it. Well, it just got relayed and, you know, re, you know, put out in a different way. And, uh, but this is what it says. You never know how. Come on, y'all, say it with me again. You never know how. If this doesn't excite you about some of your family members that aren't serving God right now, you need to take a deep breath. And understand this. You're supposed to stay focused. Come on, guys, you stay focused. You never know how. I'm going to do it this way. You never know when. Everybody say it with me. You never know when. God might sober them up. Now, how many of you know if that don't give you hope to be praying for some of the people in your lives that you wonder if God can ever do anything with that mess, look in the mirror because he did something with you. 
Even the impossible is possible with God. Do you follow me? But here's what the devil is really good at. Are you ready? The enemy is really good at this. Getting us to disconnect from the things that God says we can have. The enemy is so good at this to get you to look at the situation and see the situation as being hopeless and therefore you don't attach your faith to it anymore. And that, that just, man, I'm telling you, then you have no say-so in it. All you do is you're pulled behind the truck of life. This is what ends up happening to us, guys. So I, I, I want you to see this, and you can read it in different translations. I'm going to read it, uh, you know, in the New King, New King James here in a minute, the last part of it. But you never know how or when God might sober them up with a change of heart and a turning to the truth. Guys, come on. Is it possible for God to do the impossible? You know, is it possible for God to take a mess that somebody else has created in their lives and turn it around? You know, I'm thinking right now of, of kids who have made mistakes. I'm thinking of, of children sometimes who get addicted on drugs. I'm thinking of, of kids who make wrong decisions, and I, and I still, you know, I still go back. I've talked to them over the years. And they look at me and they said, I just wish I'd have never did that one thing. I wish I'd have never had that one drink. I wish I'd have never did the first drug. How many of you know it's there? I wish I'd have never done anything like that, you know. And I always pick at Pam. And I tell y'all, Pam's been saved since she was 10 years old. So she don't know a lot of the things that I know because how many of you know I wasn't saved when I was 10 years old? I wasn't saved when I was 20 years old. <laughs> I mean, so I've experienced some things in life that she's never experienced, but I, I think it's good that she does not know that kind of stuff. What an awesome testimony that is. But listen, guys, the enemy's really good at getting us looking at the situation, and I'm talking to somebody on Facebook right now. You look at the situation, and you see it as impossible, and it just ties the hands of God from finishing up what he's got going on in that person's life. And you need to get your faith in line you need to get your faith reestablished. come on church you need to get yourself thinking that hey this is not an impossible situation this is not an impossible thing and god can do all things come on guys god can do all things and then it says this he, he enables them i want you to see this guys a lot of times we're praying you know for or deliverance. Did you know I've seen people just finally get tired of something and just walk out of it by the power of God? <coughs> Come on, they just walk out of it by the power of God. Have you ever had enough of something and just said, you know, I've had enough and you just determined you're not going to do that anymore? Don't you think it's possible that God could just, just be there when somebody gets fed up and open up the right door for them? so that they run into him face to face and deliverance comes. Now, I shared a story with you, but, um, you know, and I was just, me and Pastor King was talking about it here just a couple weeks ago. We had a lady in our church, her son wanted part of his inheritance, which was a, was a house on property, wanted to open up a bar on the property, and it was only a little bit down the road from the church. And I think her, I think his mom started the petition. Did she start the petition or sign the petition? And we fought the alcohol license, you know, and his mom signed, the, signed it, and they stopped him from being able to open up the bar. And he got mad at her and pretty well told the family off and told them he was going to sell the property. And he packed up and he moved and went to Florida and wasn't going to have anything else to do with him. And I, and I shared this part of it with you, I know, but she would come to church every Sunday we would have a fellowship dinner like one Sunday out the month, and she would cook for that, but she would never eat. And I asked her one time, I, her name was Miss Burt. I said, Miss Burt, why are you not eating? And she said, I'm fasting for my kids. And I said, well, then why are you even here and bringing food? She said, because I like fellowship. And she would cook, she would cook, and boy, she could cook. She would cook for this, for these dinners, these fellowship dinners, and sit down and fellowship with us and not eat because Sunday was her day of fasting for her children to be saved. You know, her son went to Florida. Somebody met him and told him about Jesus. 
He gave his heart to the Lord in Florida. Surrendered his life to Christ. Came back. Apologized to his family. And went into ministry in New York ministering to homeless teenagers. Even the impossible guy is possible. But if you look at it like God can never reach your loved one. You need to change your way of thinking. Come on, guys. We, we, we've surrendered too much to the enemy. We've given too much territory to the devil, and he does not deserve it. And he does not have right to it. You know what I've determined in my life is I refuse to let him have any of my kids. Do you understand? I, I refuse to let him take that territory, something that God has given me, and make it right. You need to get your faith out there. Come on, guys. Say amen here. It says, enabling them to escape the devil's trap. Listen, he's going to give them the power to escape the trap where they are caught and held captive and forced to run his errands. Listen, this, this, this is a powerful verse of Scripture because it tells how the devil works. <clears throat> but it also tells the goodness of God regardless. Listen to what it says in 2 Timothy 2.26, and this is in the, in the um, New King James. We just read it that they may come to their senses. Everybody say amen to that. Come on, that they may come. Is that not a good confession for you to make over somebody in your life right now, some family member in your life right now? Say it with me, y'all, that they may come to their senses. <clears throat> Let's do it a different way. That they may come to their spiritual senses. Amen. That they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil having been taken captive by him to do his will. Listen here, this is what we got to understand. God made us. Will you say amen to that? Did you know I'm created in the image of God? Then you know, I like what Jesse Duplantis says. If you want to know what God looks like, look at me. Or go look at yourself. We're created in his image. We're created in the image of God. God made us. Did you know God put his breath in us? This is what the word of God says. When he created man and woman, he breathed into them the breath of life. And they became a living spirit, a living being. Do you understand? We have God's breath in us. Say it with me. I have God's breath in me. Listen here. Let me tell you, he also put his spirit inside of you. I'm trying to show you how powerful you are right now. He also placed his spirit. The Bible says that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And he established his kingdom in us. Isn't that good, guys? He established his kingdom in us. Now, let's go a little bit further. God enables you and gives you the ability, guys, to set your own self free. You know, this is, this is what I've seen a lot of times in people's lives. You can make up your own mind to walk in freedom. <coughs> and you don't need some man to lay hands on you. A lot of times. You know, one of the, one of the craziest things I think I've ever seen and it was Benny Hinn. And how many know if you watch Benny Hinn, you're going to see some crazy stuff, especially years ago. And, uh, but he had, he, had a, he had a woman come up on the platform, and she had a, de she had a demon in her. And, um, and I remember, I wish I could go and find the video. I'd love to play it for you. But he kept, he kept telling, he said, hold her hands, hold her feet. Man, she was kicking, she was screaming. And, uh, you know, and this demon was, was manifesting on the platform. And he finally, excuse me a minute, <coughs> He finally went up, and he popped the woman in the mouth. Not hard, just popped her in the mouth. And he said, he said, demon, shut up, and let me talk to the woman. And the demon shut up, and the woman said, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, the whole room got quiet. And he said, were you ever a Christian? And she said, yes, I was. She said, but I went away from God. He said, I walked away from God completely. And, uh, and he said, but don't you think you've let this demon bother you long enough? And she said, yes, sir. And he said, he led her in a prayer of repentance. I mean, he really, a, a recommitment prayer. And then he said, I want you to tell this demon to come out of you. In Jesus' name. <laughs> and she said, demon, come out of me in Jesus' name. And it came out. It came out. Now, that blows your mind, guys. That blows your mind. But listen, God is able to give power for people to walk in freedom. God enables you to walk in your freedom. 
let me do this. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 24. This is in the Passion Translation. And I want you, I want you to listen to this portion of Scripture now. Uh, uh, you know, I, I, this is the one that I was telling you about earlier, babe, because I never read it this way. It says, Hebrews 11 and verse 24, Faith enabled Moses to choose God's will. Everybody say amen to that. Listen to this, guys. Faith enables you to choose God's will. You believe. Everybody say it with me. I'm a believer. So how many of you know faith enables you to choose God's will? <clears throat> Listen to this. For although he was raised as a son of Pharaoh's daughter, he refused to make that his identity. Did you hear it? I want that to settle in. Even though he was raised, listen to this, as the son of Pharaoh's daughter, he refused to make that his identity. In other words, even though life had set him in place, he refused to identify with it. Guys, we got to get this. Doesn't matter what's been done to you. Doesn't matter what kind of life you've been handed all your life. You have the right, as a child of God, to identify with it or not to identify with it. You know, and, and I, you know, people used to ask me when, when I was drinking and, and doing a lot of drugs and stuff, did, did you get that from your dad? Did you, did you learn that from your mom and dad? And I would look at him and say, absolutely not. My mom and dad, I don't think either one of them ever took a drink. And they didn't know what a drug was. You know, so I told them, no, I, I didn't get it. Well, you had to get it from somebody in your family. And I would tell them real quick, no, I didn't. I said, I want you to know, I developed this all on my own. I developed it all by myself. You know what? I got hooked up with the wrong people, which I thought at that time was the right people. And, and they introduced me to certain things. And then I became a pro at it. Come on, guys, I started practicing. I started, I started doing the drugs. I started doing the drinking. Nobody didn't make me that way. You know what I did? I met the lifestyle and identified with it. Did you see it? I met the lifestyle and identified with it. But then one day, I met Jesus. And I met a different lifestyle. And my identity changed. You know why? Because I identified with it. This is where a lot of people mess up, guys. We've been believing that just because things have been done in our lives, that's the way we're going to be all of our lives. When Jesus has tried to tell us, I've already did something different for your life, and if you identify with that, you don't have to be bound by the old life any longer. Come on, guys, we've got to identify the right way. Well, this is what it, he refused to make that his identity. How many of you know this is some of the things that we need to do in our own life? We, we need to not identify with certain things. I choose not to participate in certain things. You know, and, and I've shared story after story with you, but I'm going to tell you right now, guys. Did you know I can wake up every day and make the right choice? Or I can wake up every day and make the wrong choice? Because God gave me the right of choice. That's called free will. So you can choose every day. Come on. <clears throat> you can choose every day. So what side do you identify with? And I've had people tell me this. Thank you. I've had people tell me this. Well, it's just according to how I wake up in the morning. You know, some days I wake up in the morning and I want to identify good. Sometimes I wake up, you know, you like that, like that guy that had the demon on one shoulder and the angel on the other. You know, what was it? We, we used to watch this movie where, um, where they, um, what was the llama one, babe, that we watched that the kids liked so much? Huh? Yeah, the Emperor's New Groove, where the guy, he's arguing with himself, and he's, this, the angel comes up, and the demon comes up, and the demon tells him, you don't want to listen to him, man. He's going to try to lead you down the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And that's about the truth. That's the way it is. Every day we get up, we have the right to choose to walk the way God tells us to walk, are not to walk the way we're supposed to walk. Now, how many of you know there's consequences both directions? <clears throat> Walking in faith 
gives you the opportunity to have what God says you can have. Not walking in faith gives you the opportunity to have what you are sowing seed for. <clears throat> Let me clear my throat. So I want to ask you a question. How do you test for faith? Do you test positive or negative? Come on, guys. We, we need to test right. Get up and do a faith test every morning. I just heard on the news they said you should go and have a COVID test every month. This is what they're saying now. You should go and get a COVID test every month so at least you know where you are. Well, how many of you know I know where I'm at? Come on, guys, you know, I mean, but, but this is something I'm telling you right now, guys, we need to, we need to test ourselves, and we're going to look at this in just a minute. We need to test ourselves to even see if we're in faith sometimes because some of the things I hear coming out of, can I be real right now? I'm not going to talk about me. I want to talk about you. Can everybody look at me for a minute? I'm going to be real right now. I'm gonna talk. Some of the things I hear coming out of your mouth ain't got nothing to do with faith. I mean, seriously. And I know it's, it's that way with me. Pam had to call me down today. <clears throat> so how do you test for faith? Are you positive or are you negative? Well, every morning you need to get up and take your faith test. And let me tell you something. If you get up and you're negative for it, get in the Word of God and build yourself up. Come on, guys. You know, you won't hear a lot of pastors say this anymore. Get down and, and pray it out in the Holy Ghost. Build yourself up on your most holy faith. Pray it in the Spirit. Pray it out in language. I, you know, somebody asked me one time, said, why do you believe in all that praying in tongues? I told them, I said, I love praying in tongues because it confuses the devil. And boy, does it ever build me up, man. Praying in the Spirit builds me up. Do you, do you follow me? Guys, sometimes you need to test yourself to see where you're at with your faith level. So how do you test? Do you test positive or do you test negative? Oh, here we go. Or do you test borderline? All kinds of things out there right now, isn't it? Well, I want to I wanna test positive. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 13. It's time for a Christian health checkup. You know, um, I... Uh, my computer, I booted it up not too long ago. I got I got a new one here because I, I got me a used Apple, and um, and it got to where it wasn't Apple anymore. It became a rotten Apple. <laughs> and so I decided I wasn't going back with another iMac. And, and uh, you know, so I ordered me a computer, and when I first got it in, I booted it up, and it said, we, we got some updates we need to do because, you know, it had been in a box for so long. So I said, okay, I figured I was here at the church. I started doing these updates. All right, so I started doing the updates. Four hours later, it finished downloading the updates. Downloading the updates. Then it said, reboot to install. And so I rebooted, and it started installing the updates. And I left it on and left. And I don't know how long it took, but I came back, you know, the next time I was at church, I came back in, I turned it back on, and it come on, and it says your your um <clears throat> your updates were installed successfully, and then it said new updates exist. <laughs> so I did another set of updates, which took 45 minutes, and restarted it. And then when I went to leave that day from the church, I went to shut it down, it said, Shut down and do updates. So how many of you know it did updates again? Well, the next time I came in and I turned it on, all that to say this, the next time I came in and I turned it on, it said your computer needs a health checkup. And I said it probably does because it's had so many updates. So I had to go through and test the memory and go through and test this and go through and test the hard drive, go through and did all, all this health checkup and did a health checkup to make sure that I guess the updates didn't kill my computer. All right, well, sometimes in our own lives, guys, if we're not careful, what will end up happening spiritually is that we need to make sure we're doing a daily update. And, I, and I'm going to do this a little bit different, okay? Um, you need to be reading the Word of God every day. 
Come on, guys. If you didn't say amen, then I'm going to have a prayer line afterwards. You need to be reading the Word of God every day. Come on, guys. Every day you need to be in the Word. Every day. And you also need to be praying every day. But you also need to be talking to the Holy Spirit every day. Because I'm going to tell you right now, I can read the Word, and that's going to that's build me up in a certain way. I can talk to God, listen as I pray. That's going to build me up and encourage me in a certain way. But me talking to the Holy Spirit is going to do my daily download. Do you understand? Let me know where I'm at. Let me know what's necessary. Give me the guidance I need for the day. Hey, give me the integrity I need for the day to walk this thing out. Give me the power that I need for the day. Do you follow me? So we do have to have these help checkups sometimes. Everybody look at the people around you and say it's time for a checkup. So listen to what it says. And I got this from AFCM today, so I put this one in the sermon. So some of you who get the AFCM things, you'll probably say, he stole that. No, I didn't. It's the word and I can use it. Second Corinthians 13.5. Examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. Come on, y'all. Can we read that together? Examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. Oh, come on. Let's do it again. Examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. So you need to do a self-examination sometimes. And that may be just as simple as saying, Head, shut up. Because what you just thought wasn't godly. Come on, y'all. Mouth. Shut up. Come on. Because what you just said wasn't right. Come on, guys. Sometimes we need to do these. You need to make yourself speak the word. You got to make yourself think right. Because if you just let your mind ramble, you'll have mud bubbles popping everywhere. Little things coming up all over the place. I, I'm just telling you guys, we, we got to do these checkups. And, and then it says this, test yourselves. Everybody say it with me. Test yourselves. You know, um, our car, Pam's car, has this um, eco boost on it. When you stop at a red light, it shuts the engine off. I can't stand it. I hate it. <clears throat> I just hate it. There's a button on there that says, turn off EcoBoost. So every time I get in the car, I turn that thing off. Because when I get to a red light, I don't want my engine cutting off and my air just circulating old, stale air. I want air conditioning or I want heat. I want the car running because as soon as the light changes, guess what I'm in the mood for? Get it and go. I don't want to take my foot off the brake and the car crank up and have to wait a second or two to take off. Well, ours has started acting up, and uh, it won't come on anymore. I guess I turned it off one time too many. So I did a, um, I did a, I did a check on it today. I went online and uh, you know did a search for it just to see what was going on. And the mechanic said, well, it can be a lot of different things. He said it can be a sensor on a door. It can be your water not getting hot enough. It can be um, the amps on your battery not not charging enough, you know, with the cold weather. Or it can be five or six other things. <coughs> and I turned it off. And, and, you know, and I thought, there's an easy way to handle this thing. I can take it to the shop and figure, let them figure out what's wrong with it. You know why? Because they have the tools to test it. Does everybody follow me? They have the tools to test it and figure out what kind of code it's throwing. Then they'll know exactly how to fix it. Or I can just keep turning the button off. Now, see, guys, in our lives, sometimes it's just that simple. We can keep turning the button off, but that doesn't mean the problem's fixed. It just means we can keep running. 
But eventually, how many of you know, it's going to show up again. But God's Word is the instruction manual. Can I do it that way, Lord, without it being sacrilegious? And the Holy Spirit is the technician. And He can run the check on your life to tell you exactly where the problem is. And a lot of times, guys, we already know it, don't we? <clears throat> but we don't want to change it. And the reason why we won't go to the Holy Spirit is because we don't want Him to tell us what to do. It's just as simple as that. Now, listen to this. Examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not know yourselves? That Jesus Christ is in you? Unless indeed you are disqualified? Listen to what it says in the message paraphrase. Test yourselves to make sure you are solid in the faith. Everybody say that with me. Solid in the faith. Don't drift along taking everything for granted. Give yourselves regular checkups. You need firsthand evidence. Come on, guys, isn't that good? First-hand evidence, not mere hearsay, that Jesus Christ is in you. Test it out. If you fail the test, boy, that's pretty good, <laughs> isn't it? Do a self-test. Guys, if things is not going right in your life, how many of you know, don't run from the answer. Run to it. Go to God and ask him, hey, <clears throat> where did I mess up at? You know, and God's got enough to tell you exactly what you did, exactly how to fix it. And then most of the times what I found out is when you get the guidance of God, not only does he fix it for you, but he fixes it for everybody else that you messed it up for too. God has, God has a way of healing, doesn't he? And bringing this thing. Well, this is what it says. You need firsthand evidence. Everybody say firsthand evidence. Not mere hearsay. Well, this is the Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirits. How many of you know that is first-hand evidence? <coughs> Pretty simple, isn't it? Test it out. If you fail the test, do something about it. with me just a minute go to Habakkuk 2 4 Habakkuk I'm from the south so it's Habakkuk <clears throat> it says behold the proud his soul is not upright in him but the just shall live by his faith. Can we say that last part together? But the just shall live by what? His faith. <clears throat> Listen to this, guys. It's important for you to engage your faith. That word faith there means the heart's confidence, a trusting in which the heart rests on the word or character of one deemed worthy of confidence. Here, here's, here's where we get... This, this is where our faith gets challenged at. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. I got a cold that I'm healing from. Healing up. Everybody say amen to that. But he, here's what ends up happening. Okay? And I, and I know I, I beat on religion a lot, so let's just go ahead and do it again tonight, too, while we're here. Religion is really good at talking you out of the things of God. <clears throat> it is amazing to me how good religion is to talk you out of what God says you can have. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I've seen this happen in people's lives, guys. I, I've watched people get full of the Holy Spirit. Come on, can we say that together? I'm talking about full of the Holy Spirit. Speaking in other tongues, and then they decide they want... Oh, boy, this is going to be dangerous, but anyway... They decide they want to go to a church that's more popular, you know, because they got a better youth group or a better children's church. 
and they'll go because they, they think they can, they can gain more out of the service. Am I getting in trouble right now, Pam? Okay, they, they, they go because they, can, they think they can get more out of the service. And then we'll see them. Pam and I have had this happen several times. We'll see them a little bit later, and the church will actually talk to them about this tongue stuff and tell them point blank, well, you know, that's not for today. And, and you don't need you don't need to be, you can't do that here. You can't you can't do that here. So they have the option then of compromising and staying, or leaving and finding a church that's spirit filled. Come on, guys! Now that, this is truth. Sometimes truth is heavy, and I can't tell you how many people I've seen over the years end up losing the power of the Holy Spirit in their life because they'd rather go to a popular church. Boy, that went over. But listen, this is what it is. Religion will talk you right out of the things of God, guys. The reason why most people don't have confidence in the things of God, are you ready for this one too, is because we, uh, we allow somebody else to determine who God is in our life and what God does in our lives. Well, you know, if, if the Lord just chooses to do something to you, I guess you just got to take it. Well, not if you know the word because then you understand who God is. And now you understand the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus came to give you life and to give it more abundantly. So if it falls in the category of life and more abundant life, you know where it's from. All right? The other way, you know where it's from. So faith is heart's confidence. Everybody say confidence. A trusting in which the heart rests on the word or character of the one deemed worthy of confidence. So this is what, if the, if the enemy can get you doubting God... Where do you place your confidence? When well, in your confidence is misled and you start trusting in the things of the world. <clears throat> so faith is a free choice. Everybody say it with me. Faith is a free choice. How many of you know, whether I choose to operate in faith or not has nothing to do with anything other than me choosing it or not. Faith is a choice. It's an act of will. We'll get into this a little bit more next week. Faith is an act of will. This is what you do. You trust God. You trust what God says. You have confidence in God. So in other words, what you say is, I know the evidence out here may be something, saying something totally different, but God's word saying this, now my faith is in God. And my faith is in God's word. So, so what, where does that leave me? Now I'm trusting in God, and that out there is not going to matter anymore. Now, this, this is the thing that I know about faith. If I believe God's word, God has a way of working his will out in my life according to what his word says, but then also changing the situation to line up with it. And sometimes I don't even have to touch it. <clears throat> All I got to do is operate in faith. Look here, if we don't have faith, and this is where the enemy misleads a lot of people, without faith we would... We would overcome no obstacles because we would make no efforts. Did you get that? Without faith, we would overcome no obstacles because we wouldn't have faith to make any efforts. Did you follow it? Without faith, you won't even try to overcome an obstacle because you, there's no sense in you putting the effort into it. So what does faith do? Faith activates your works, and you start putting effort into something. Did you know if, if I want to do something, you know, I, I told you about my doors Sunday. Did you know, um, you know, every time I pull up, I look at my doors. I'm proud of my doors now. They were aggravating there for a while, but now I'm proud. Did you know every time it rains, I go out and I look in my building to see if my doors are leaking, and my doors aren't leaking. And I told you Sunday, that's because you got to do it right. Come on, guys, you just, you just got to do it right. Well, here's the thing. The enemy is really good, and religion is really good at getting you to succumb to the obstacles of your life because it talks you out of putting the effort into what you need to do to gain the victory. And, it, and, and if you're going to live in victory, how many of you know it's going to take effort? I tell you, I'm going to close this thing down in just a minute because I, I don't want to strain my voice too much more, but I want you to see something. Go to Genesis chapter 42. 
in verse 36. And I want you to see this, guys, because, and we'll pick this up probably again next Wednesday <coughs> and go with this um, because I, I want to spend a little bit more time on this because I want you to see how easy it is for you to talk you out you talk yourself out of what God says you can have. How many of you believe the Word of God is a promise to you? Now, how many of you know if you believe the Word of God is a promise to you, then you have the right to stand on those promises? <clears throat> and declare those promises. But I want you to see how the enemy really works here. And you'll know the story. I, ask, I want you to go back, if you will, and read this story in Genesis chapter 42. It says, And Jacob their father said to them, <coughs> You have bereaved me. Joseph is no more. Simeon is no more. And you want to take Benjamin. All these things are against me. Now, how many of you know the word of God is true? Come on, guys. How, come on. How many of you know? How many of you believe the word of God is true? And how many of you know what said right here was not? It was man making a statement as to something he believed. Because listen to this: we know Joseph was not dead, but in his mind he was. We know Simeon was not dead. But in his mind, he was. Do you see where I'm going here? Okay? And he said, now you want to take Benjamin. And he says, all these things are against me. What you say makes a difference. Can I even do it a little bit different here? What you see makes a difference. This is why it's so important for you to stay in faith. Because if you know the promises of God, then the natural can be telling you one thing, but the Spirit can lead you the right way. Do you follow me? Because if you read the rest of the story, we're not, we may do it um, next week, but if you read the rest of the story, excuse me, <coughs> if you read the rest of the story, you'll find out that all these things was against him, but they weren't true. He had just succumbed to what he thought was going on. Because Joseph was alive. Simeon was alive. And now... This was going to be their, the road for deliverance. Do you see what I'm saying? It's so easy, guys, for us to look in the natural and see what's in the natural. In the natural, things may look bad, but that doesn't mean it's true. You know why? You always have something, someone, working on your behalf behind the scenes. Here we go back to it again. That's bigger and better than you could ever understand or even imagine, and your responsibility is not to work the miracle, but to believe the miracle worker. And let God take care of the circumstances. Do you follow me? <laughs> because you may, talk, you may be talking yourself out of the very thing that is about to deliver you. And the natural things may look bad, but it doesn't mean it's true. If you focus all you have on what you've lost, you'll never gain everything that God has for you. That's deep, isn't it? If you focus everything you have on what you've lost, you'll never gain everything that God has for you. This is why we have to see through the eye of faith. This is why I titled this, let me get back to it, Hitting Life Head On is because you need to stop letting life push you around and you need to start pushing back on the circumstances of life. I'm going to close it this way, guys. Speak to your bodies. Tell them to heal. Come on, guys. Speak to your bodies. Tell them to heal. Even if you don't feel like preaching. Preach anyway. That's for my personal notebook tonight. <clears throat> okay? Even if you're going to get healed while you preach, preach anyway. Do you follow me? Speak to your bodies. Tell them to heal. God made you to heal. So heal. Do you understand? Speak to your finances. 
You do what God's Word says. You're a tither, you're a giver, you sow, speak to those finances. No matter what you're saying in the natural, let me tell you right now, I know God can work things out for your good. Come on, y'all. He knows exactly how to get it to you. Speak to him. But see, I mean, if you, I, I, who was it? I heard somebody one time. I've heard several of them. I can't remember who this was. Said Somebody told him, said, when you open up the checkbook, you need to laugh at it. And he said, well, they didn't understand. Our checkbook said zero. He says, it's kind of a lot hard to laugh at zeros. And he said, when we first started laughing at the zeros, we went, ha, 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 ha. And he said, but as we started getting in the spirit, we started to understand Standing that God was bigger than that. God's bigger than that. God knows how to do it. God knows how to bring to you everything that's necessary for you. And how many of you know if God knows how to work things out for your good, then he cares about your finances because that's for your good too. Do you follow me? Hit it head on. Stop surrendering. Stop just looking at life and going, well, I guess I'll just have to go through this again today. Wouldn't it be a good day today to get free? Wouldn't it be the best day in the world today for your deliverance to come to pass? Wouldn't it be wonderful if you got home and you got that phone call about that family member who turned everything over to God? Come on, y'all, he got set free. Look here, keep your faith right. Keep your faith strong. Keep your faith focused. Meet life head on. Be an overcomer, because that's what the Word says you are. Can I get an amen? Stand to your feet, and let's pray together. Father, I thank you for the Word. The Word is true. Will you say amen, church? It's true. And God, sometimes we do have to step by faith. We do have to walk by faith. This is what we're called faith people for. We're called faith people because we step out by faith. We do things by faith. We operate by faith. And our faith sees us through and activates the promises of God into our lives. We're going to meet it head on. Will you say amen, church? We're going to meet it head on. We're not, going to, we're not going to get into deep, dark depression and excessive misery over everything that's going on in everybody else's lives, God. What we're going to do is we're going to operate in the joy of the Lord because the joy of the Lord is our strength. We're going to keep our hearts and minds on you, and we're going to walk in the fullness of God. Will you say amen, church? So, Father, I thank you for this word being planted inside of us. I thank you it'll take root and it'll grow. I know I've said some things tonight that may, may have been a little bit deeper and it may take some time to teach this out a little bit more, God. Holy Spirit, direct me on how to do that. Let me be sensitive to hear, because this is valuable. This is important. This is something that's life-changing. God, we're going to be walking in victory like we never walked in before. We're going to see victory come like we've never seen before. But it's also going to usher in an abundance of people to come our way. And God, I thank you for that. I thank you for that. And I speak to us. We are ready to receive, God. We are ready to receive. Will you say it with me, church? We are ready to receive. And I declare it in Jesus' name. Would you say amen if you're in agreement? Amen. Give him a shout of praise. Can we do it together? Amen. Why don't you give Jackie and David a hug before you leave tonight? God bless you. Have a good night, and we'll see you Sunday morning. I'll be here, and I'll be cranking.